So here we have three Nintendo Switches. And I do not know if we're gonna be able to get to all of them in this video, but we'll see, depending on the time. I have one here that needs an SD card, FEC connector replacement. So the FEC connector for the SD card module got damaged and I'm gonna start with this one first. And we have one here. I do not know what's wrong with this one. Let's try to plug it in and see if it charges. Right now it does not power on, but uh, let's plug the USB-C cable and monitor the amp meter. Amp meter turned on and it's zero amps being drawn by the console, zero amps. Looking at the USB-C port, I do not see any physical damage. USB-C port looks good. So it's something to do with the logic board. We'll take a look at this one maybe next. And we have another one here. Customer just brought it in, he's local. He found us on YouTube and he brought this one in. He attempted the repair and he damaged the board. He removed the USB-C port and ended up ripping all the pads from here. But that's not why he came here. He bought another board and installed it himself. And now he has an error. 210 dash some number. I do not know what's causing the error. We're gonna have to find out. I told them that uh, I do not know exactly what's causing this error, but we'll see. So let's start with the one that needs an SD card FEC connector replacement. And we'll move on to the second and third one. We removed the FEC connector in the previous video, and now we need to solder a new FEC connector here. We did not have those parts in stock, so now we have a huge stock of this part. Just add some leaded solder and we're gonna reflow the connector down in place. I have a customer. I'm gonna put the hot air station at 390 degrees Celsius and hot air at about 50. Okay. Great, awesome. Okay, Big Boss disassembled the uh, other board. Let's take a look to see what's going on. Now, if you remember, we tested this and zero amps being drawn by this console. And we have a customer. It looks like work was done to this board. So where do we start? We should we start with the USB-C port? Should we inspect other areas of the board? And we do not have a short. No short. No short. No short. And no short. So this side of the board is also good. And no reason to believe that this chip or the other one are bad. Since there's work that was done to the USB-C port, I'm thinking it could be a USB-C port issue. Let me flip the board, just take a look at the back. This chip is gone, look at this. This chip is blown. Let's see, do we have a short on this side of the board? And we have a short. We have a short on the side of the board and that's because of this chip. And this chip is probably what's causing problems with the console. 
we see a clear indication that the chip is blown. We're going to go ahead and replace this chip and we'll test again. We have to know where pin number one is. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the chip. The chip is what's probably causing the short and causing problems with the rest of the console. And pin number one is on the bottom left. We have a blown trace here and the blown trace is probably caused by the chip. When it blew, it caused damage to this side of the board. We're going to have to restore this trace, but let's take it one step at a time. I do not know what these bubbles are all about. I've never seen bubbles like this before. Strange. I do not even know if this chip was changed before and what type of flux or chemical was used before and applied on the board. Yeah, I know. Perfect. And now we're gonna run this wire to right over here. Just like that. Let's clean up and we're going to apply a solder mask so we can secure the wire down in place before we solder the chip. And hopefully by soldering the chip, it will solve the problem. Unless we have a problem with the USB-C port. Do we still have a short? And no short. So the chip was causing the short. One person was asking, does it matter that you still have flux on the board before applying a solder mask? It doesn't really matter. I mean, this stuff is microscopic. What you're seeing under the microscope, it looks big on the screen, but it's really microscopic. Do not worry yourself about small things like this. Okay, so let's apply a solder mask. And now for the solder mask to harden, we need to expose it to UV light. So we're gonna shine UV light on it for about 20 seconds. Sometimes I like to do it more, 30, 40 seconds. It doesn't matter if I take a break, relax for about a minute with the UV light on it. But usually within 20 seconds, it should be good. Okay, and now we can solder our chip. Okay, and it's hard. Great. I feel like the wire is a bit too long. I do not want this wire to touch ground for whatever reason. So maybe we can make it a bit shorter. And 
and let's do it. Now it's down in place. Okay, now I can say it's perfect. Press and hold. Very nice. And the job is done. And again, we're going to give it to Big Boss to reassemble and test. And we'll see. Zero point forty nine amps being drawn, and yes. Look at that. It's turning on. Right there. Right there. It's working. Great. Awesome. Awesome. So the console is charging. We can tell from here. Amps being drawn by the console right now is 0 0.83 amps. 0 0.84 amps. So we did two Nintendo Switch consoles. The third one I do not have time for right now. We'll do it tomorrow and see what's causing that error that's on the screen. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.